Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to Aussie Fish Keeping. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at all 13 different types of freshwater aquarium algae. And we're gonna be talking about how you can identify them, what causes them to grow, and some of the solutions that you can put in place to minimize their growth or to just kill them altogether. So there is actually quite a few different types of freshwater aquarium algae and there's a lot more than I actually first expected. I thought there was only a few, so things like surface algae, hair algae, blackbeard algae, thread algae. But I've done a little bit more research into it and there's actually around 13 different types of freshwater aquarium algae. And as for how this algae actually gets into your aquarium, there's a few ways. So obviously it does come in as spores and those can come in on plants, they can come in inside like fish waste, they can come in water, substrate, practically anything that you put into your aquarium from another water source usually has some form of algae spore on it. And if those algae spores are put in the correct conditions, they can obviously grow algae. So yeah, with that being said, I guess let's just jump straight into today's video with the first type of algae. So number one on our list, we have a very common algae, we have hair algae. So as the name suggests, obviously this stuff does look like sort of hair-like strands and they're usually either green or brown in coloration. And oftentimes they form in like little clumps on your plants, your substrate and your decorations in your aquarium. And like I said before, this stuff is actually pretty common to get in your aquarium. So as for some of the things that can cause this stuff to actually grow in your aquarium, there's actually four. So number one is excessive nutrients. So that's high levels of nitrates and phosphates that come from overfeeding or decaying organic matter. Number two is high light, so any excessive light, whether that be you're keeping your aquarium light on for too long or if your light intensity is just too high for your tank. It can also come about if there's low CO2 in your aquarium. So if there's low CO2, that can actually weaken your aquarium plants, which means algae has a better chance at taking over your aquarium. Just because your aquarium plants aren't being as effective when it comes to using up excess nutrients. And the final reason this stuff comes about can be due to poor water circulation. So that's just if you don't have enough flow or if you have a dead spot in your aquarium, which basically means no flow really gets to it. So yeah, those are basically all of the causes that can cause this stuff to grow in your aquarium. And as for the ways you can actually get rid of this stuff, you basically wanna do the complete opposite. So you wanna make sure there's not excess nutrients. You wanna decrease your lighting, increase your flow, and also try and increase your CO2. But yeah, as long as all of those things are in check, this stuff shouldn't even grow in your aquarium in the first place. But yeah, with that being said, the first type of algae that you can get in your aquarium is hair algae. Moving on to the next type of algae on our list, it's super similar to hair algae, we have thread algae. So I've actually made a few videos on this stuff before and I'm not gonna lie, I actually quite like this stuff. So if you can see behind me here, I've got like this little Enla Celestial Pearl Denio cherry shrimp tank and I've got this massive ball of thread algae in there. And I find it basically works as a java moss in this sort of aquarium. So it provides space for your little fish to hide, it provides space for your cherry shrimp to hide. And obviously it's doing basically what an aquarium plant would do. So it's just keeping the water nice and clean in there. But as for how you can identify this stuff, it's basically like sort of thicker hairs. And a lot of the time it forms like big thick balls or mats in your aquarium. And this stuff usually just clings to substrate or plants and other decorations as well. And as for how this stuff grows in your aquarium, it's actually identical to hair algae. So it grows if there's excess nutrients, too much light, too much flow and inadequate CO2. And as for some of the ways you can get rid of it, obviously you can decrease the lighting, increase the flow, increase the CO2, and also decrease the nutrients. But the best way I find is just to remove it with your hands. So even though it does sort of attach itself to plants, it's actually super easy to pull away from the plants. And something else you can do is get a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. And if you take your plants out with the algae on it, you can actually spray them with the hydrogen peroxide. Leave them out of the water for like a few seconds, dunk them into a bucket of water, and all of that thread algae should actually sort of start bubbling and turn white and it'll come off your plants. So it's super easy to get rid of that way as well. But if you do actually get this stuff in your aquarium, I would actually consider you quite lucky because it took me quite a while to get some of this and I actually really do enjoy having it. But yeah, with that being said, the second type of algae on our list is thread algae. Moving on to the next sort of algae on our list, we have one that I was not actually really aware about and that's green dust algae. 
So most of the time, this stuff sort of looks like a fine green sort of dust-like film that grows on your glass. And it's usually easily like wiped away. So if you go in there and wipe it, it comes off pretty easily, but it does reappear quite quickly especially if the conditions are right. And this stuff usually comes around, obviously, because of the low CO2, high lighting, no flow, but it can also come around if you're setting up a new aquarium. So the high silica levels in the new tanks can contribute to the algae blooms. And if it is coming about in a new aquarium, there's really not much you can do except doing constant water changes just to try and get that silica out of your water. But other than that, you've just got to decrease your lighting, increase your flow, increase your CO2 and decrease your nutrients. But yeah, with that being said, green dust algae is another type of freshwater algae that you can get in your aquarium. Moving on to the next type of algae on our list, this one's super similar to the green dust algae. We have green spot algae. So these are little small green dots of algae and they're actually like relatively hard and sort of hard to scrape off your glass. And they form like a sort of stubborn coating over your glass and over your decorations. And there's really no other way to get rid of this stuff besides to scrape it. So this one usually comes about when there's excess of lighting, inadequate CO2, and actually when there's low level of nutrients and a high pH. So elevated pH levels can actually contribute to the growth of this stuff just because it absolutely thrives in that high pH. So the best ways to get rid of it is number one, stabilize your pH, stabilize your nutrients, decrease your lighting and increase your CO2. Bristle nose can actually eat this stuff as well, although I find it is somewhat hard for them to eat unless you have like a really nice big bristle nose in there. Just because like I said, it's actually a super hard algae and it's almost like, I don't even know, like a little crust that forms over your glass so the only way you can really get rid of it is with like a razor blade even some like magnetic algae scrubbing brushes won't really work but yeah with that being said green spot algae is another type of algae that can grow in your aquarium moving on to the next type of algae on our list we have another relatively common one we have blue green algae so as the name suggests, obviously this stuff is sort of a bluish, sort of greenish color, almost turquoise, I guess. And it forms like these slimy, gelatinous little mats that usually grow over your plants and substrate. And a lot of the time, if you like play around with it, it does really smell bad. So this stuff usually comes about in heated aquariums just because it really does like that warm temperature. Also when there's low flow stagnant waters and obviously when there's high light and high nutrients. So if you're trying to set up like a new planted aquarium and you're trying to like grow a carpet maybe and you've got heaps of your nutrient rich substrate in there and very little plants, this stuff can actually grow very prolifically in that sort of a setup just because it has access to all of those nutrients as the plants are number one new, so they're not really gonna be using much nutrients anyway, just because they haven't really got their roots settled in. A lot of the time in a new planted aquarium, there's not really much leaf coverage from your aquarium plants, so there's usually very high lighting, and those two things alone can cause this stuff to grow absolutely wild in your aquarium. And the only ways to really get rid of it is to decrease your lighting, decrease your nutrients, turn down your temperature, and even improve your flow. But yeah, blue-green algae or cyanobacteria is a, another type of algae that can definitely grow in your aquarium. Moving on to the next sort of algae on our list, we have a, another super common one. We have staghorn algae. So once again, obviously, like the name suggests, it does look kind of like these little antlers of deer and they usually form on your glass and they're sort of a greenish brownish color and yeah they sort of just branch out from your glass or from your leaves of your aquarium plants and this stuff generally comes about when there's some sort of imbalance in your lighting nutrients co2 or flow and the only ways to get rid of it is to correct those parameters so that's improve your circulation increase your co2 lower your lighting and also lower your nutrients but yeah with that being said staghorn algae is another type of algae that can grow in your aquarium moving on to the next sort of algae on our list we have another super common one we have brown diatom algae so this stuff is obviously brown it's sort of dusty and it coats like your glass and your substrate and your rocks and your plants and literally everything else in your aquarium. So this stuff also comes around when there's high silica levels in your aquarium, low light, high organic waste, which does contribute to high nutrients. And sometimes it does come around when there's no flow in your aquarium as well. 
Once again, the only solutions is just to correct those few things. And the best thing to do, in my opinion, is to change these parameters, then clean it off with like a razor or something. And that'll just stop it from growing back again a second time. And if you do start to see it grow back, it does mean that you need to alter one of these parameters again, just because there is some sort of imbalance in your aquarium. But yeah, with that being said, brown diatom algae is another type of freshwater algae. Moving on to the next sort of algae on our list, we have black beard algae. This stuff actually kind of looks cool. I've never really had it in my aquarium, so I don't know how much it spreads or anything like that. And this stuff usually appears, obviously it's black. It's sort of like a silky bush and it grows on your plants, on your glass, on your rocks, on your substrate. And it sort of forms like these dense little clumps or patches. And it once again comes around when there's too many nutrients, too little light, too little CO2 and not enough flow. And some of the ways you can get rid of this, obviously correct those things. And also some aquarium fish actually eat this stuff. So SAEs or Siamese algae eaters are one of the greatest blackbeard algae eating fish out there. But yeah, with that being said, blackbeard algae is another type of algae that can grow in your aquarium. Moving on to the next sort of algae on our list, we have another relatively cool one actually. We have blanket weed algae. So this is another one I actually try and keep whenever it grows in my aquarium and it sort of forms these little grass-like little patches on your substrate. It can also be sort of a floating plant as well, so it can start to form on your substrate and as it gets bigger, it will get like these little bubbles underneath it and that'll lift it up to the top of your aquarium and it'll actually like float around like a little ricky up. So this stuff actually comes about when there's poor filtration, warm temperature, high nutrients and high light. And as far as I know, there's actually no aquarium fish that do actually eat this stuff. So the easiest way to get rid of it is just wait till it floats and then just grab it out and throw it in like your garden or something. But obviously you can correct those other things as well and it will just slowly shrivel up and die. But yeah, with that being said, blanket weed algae is another type of algae that you can get in your aquarium. Moving on to the next sort of algae, probably one of the most annoying algae in my opinion, we have green fuzz algae. So green fuzz algae is super annoying. It's like this little green fuzzy algae and it grows like around the edges of your aquarium plant leaves. And it's actually like basically impossible to get off your aquarium plants just because if you try and rip it off, it'll just rip your plant's leaves. And if you leave it on there, it'll just completely take over your aquarium plant. So the only way you can really get rid of it is with the hydrogen peroxide. So usually this stuff only comes about when you don't have enough plants in your aquarium, too many nutrients, too much light or low CO2. It can also come around when there's poor water flow. And the only way to get rid of it is to fix those things and like I said, use the hydrogen peroxide. There may be a few different types of aquarium fish that eat it, like the Siamese algae eaters, even rosy barbs I think will eat this stuff. But besides that, there's actually not too many aquarium fish that will eat it out there. So if you do end up getting this in your aquarium, I wish you luck because it's absolutely annoying. But yeah, green fuzz algae is another type of algae that can grow in your aquarium. Moving on to the next sort of algae on our list, we have actually kind of a beneficial one. We have green water. So, I mean, like the name suggests, this stuff just makes your water green. And it usually comes around when your lighting is way too high and when you have way too many nutrients in there. The good thing about this stuff is it doesn't really affect anything in your aquarium too much. It may affect your aquarium plants just because it can use up a lot of nutrients and it can sort of murky up the water, which means the light has a lot harder time getting through to your aquarium plants. But besides that, it's actually relatively good to have at least one tank in your collection of green water, just because you can feed it to your fry and it's actually pretty healthy to have your fish in there. So it actually fosters all sorts of microorganisms, which are once again, super beneficial for your aquarium fish, particularly super small fry that you can't find anything to feed them and the only way you can get rid of this stuff is to completely do like a 100% water change on your water and that's probably the most effective way if I'm being completely honest so this stuff will usually come around in like outdoor ponds or outdoor tanks or setups and things just because the sunlight is obviously super intense and obviously it's usually bright for about 12 hours a day so it can cause this stuff to sprout quite easily in your water but yeah with that being said green water algae is definitely another type of algae that can grow in your aquarium. Moving on to the final type of algae on our list, we have green beard algae. So like the black beard algae, it does form in like tufts or clumps. And the only real difference between this stuff is that this one's green and black beard algae is black. And this is one that comes about when you have just like 
the general imbalances. So high nutrients, high light, low CO2 and low flow. And you can obviously remove this stuff by balancing those things or by using things like Siamese algae eaters. But yeah, green beard algae is definitely another type of super annoying algae that can grow in your aquarium. So that is actually gonna bring us to the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed and I hope I helped you guys learn a little bit more about freshwater aquarium algae. If you did enjoy today's video, please make sure to go down and subscribe. And while you're down there, smash the like button and comment your thoughts on today's video. I always love going down there and reading them all and I try to reply back to as many comments as I can. Make sure to let me know if I've left out any different types of algae as well. I'd love to learn about them. Also, if you haven't done so already, please make sure to go check out my website, aussiefishkeeping.com. I've got all sorts of rare guppy strains on there. I've got some denios, bristle nose, all sorts of aquarium fish. But yeah, with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all in that next video.